Uh, we're with, are you Matthew? Yes, with Arizona Pace? State University. Matthew Pace, Arizona State. So Matthew, what are you working on here with uh, isotropic analysis? We've been looking at isotropic analysis and the teleconnection patterns. So we're looking at El Nino, PNA, PDO, NAO. And we found the results for El Nino and La Nina, and we found that it actually matches up quite nicely. On the 300, 315, the 305, and the 295 potential temperature surfaces, we found that you have a stronger isotropic trough in the western United States, so you have an anomalous trough in the western United States, that's indicative of moisture moving into the area, then you have more precipitation, or in La Nina years, you actually see an isotropic trough, a stronger isotropic trough in the southern part of the United States, which is indicative of less moisture, less rainfall. Okay, now I'm going to move the video so we can just see the map for a second, you can point where the location of the trough is in the different here is your El Nino for your spring. You have an anomalous isotropic trough. So you have moisture moving in, more rainfall. In the La Nina years, you see that you have an isotropic trough here, you have, or an isotropic ridge, a strong isotropic ridge. So dry conditions, you have your anomalous isotropic trough up here, so you have more moisture up here, more rainfall. And you can see that as you move throughout the, all of the months. It's not quite as strong as summer and autumn, but the same typical pattern appears in the winter months. Did you expect to find this kind of effect? Uh, well, we had done prior research looking at isotropic analysis and drought detection, and we found some nice correlation. So we figured that you would likely see this kind of effect. Why did you look for this? Basically, our hope is to kind of get isotropic analysis back into the mainstream of forecasting, especially in climate forecast. So just to look at this compared to the 500 millibar chart, we just want to see if there's a matchup. So when, when was isotropic analysis sort of more popular and how, why, why did it fall out of favor? Definitely in the 1930s it was more popular with Jerome and Amaya. He was mainly the pioneer of isotropic analysis. It fell out of practice mainly after World War I, World War II, when the pilots wanted constant pressure charts. Because isotropic analysis uses constant potential temperature, so, and 500 millibar charts, 300 millibar charts, that's all constant pressure. So, it really, the weather service and all those people really tailored to the aviation community instead of a surface that can actually show uplift in moisture transportation. So, by showing the uplift, what, what are you hoping to, uh, to get out of that for, um, what, what will you be able to find that you won't be able to find with other sorts of analysis? Then? Well, when you look at the 500 millibar charts, you've seen a constant pressure. When you're looking at the isotropic analysis, you actually see uplift up the isotropic ridge, down the isotropic trough. So you can see uplift in regions. You can see, and normally the troughs are associated with more moisture. So you have more mixing, you have higher mixing ratios in the trough. So you can really see more things on the isotropic chart versus the 500 millibar chart. I guess what I'm getting at, you mentioned drought earlier. Uh, are you trying to sort of find a way to get a handle on Enzo drought connections in the southwest or other topics like that with this? That is one of the goals of this, is to actually look for the teleconnection in drought conditions in La Nina, El Nino years on the isotropic charts, using the isotropic charts. Do you find people uh, accept this as a good idea, sort of a, a, a direction to go in, in um, So far we've gotten positive results. The only problem is isotropic analysis, you have to pick what surface you want to use. You can't just use the same surface all the time because you may run into the ground. For example, in the summer months you have to use a higher isotropic surface, or in the winter months you use a lower surface, like a 295K. So you kind of have to twist your mind a little bit in looking at this compared to just pulling out the 500 millimeter chart and knowing exactly what you're looking at. So uh, what are you going to do next with this? Uh, well, we're looking, we found good results for 